Hello guys, today we're going to study um, the basics of a steady state response. Um, this is part of the topic of uh, time analysis. Then, let us consider for example this uh, step response. Imagine that you uh, input some, some step, some step uh, function and the answer of the system is like this. If it is a unit step, then if you can see clearly it goes to one uh, so it goes to the reference so for this case particular case we have um, steady state error equals to zero but not that is not the case in the in a, in a general situation so one over s times s is going to be one that's why we have that the uh, steady state error becomes the limit when s tends to zero of one over one plus g times h so um, the only term depending on s here is uh, the open loop transfer function g of s h of s um, then if we define uh, kp as limit when s tends to zero of g of s h of s then uh, we can obtain the steady state error as one over one plus kp this is a very uh, very important uh, um, parameter uh, which can be uh, used as an objective if you can see um, if I want if we want the, the steady state error goes to zero if, and we have a step input the only thing that we have to do is to make kp tending to infinity in order for this to happen kp should have a pole uh, at the uh, I mean the, the open loop transfer function should have a pole at the origin mm -hmm. If this have a if this uh, term uh, has a pole at the origin, then when limit uh, when we find the limit when s tends to zero, then kp goes to infinity. If kp goes to infinity, then of course uh, error steady state error goes to zero. So a uh, very important idea here is that if we want the output to go to the reference, we need and we have a step input, we need that open loop transfer function have uh, has only one pole at the origin let us consider another typical input for example a ramp input um, for this case r of s is going to be 1 over s squared in such a way that we're going to have another s here multiplying the denominator in the steady state error in the limit so um, if you can see the only term uh, that contains uh, this variable is s times gh so let us define um, kb as the velocity steady state coefficient equals to this limit tending to zero um, and finally steady state error becomes one over kb so imagine for example that g h contains a pole at the origin if this uh, is happening then kb becomes some some value uh, different from zero and this is not infinity and uh, so we can use this in order to find steady state error as one over kb but uh, what if we want the steady state error to be zero then we need kb to tend to infinity uh, for this to happen, we need open loop transfer function gh uh, to have a, po a couple of poles at the origin. If we have two poles at the origin, then we're going to have that the limit when uh, s tends to zero becomes uh, a huge number, infinity. And um, this leads to have steady state error equals to zero. Let us consider just another input. Um, this is a parabolic input. Uh, we're going to have uh, Laplace transform equals to 1 over s cubic. Then steady state error is going to have some uh, s squared multiplying the denominator here. So um, if we have a g s uh, and uh, times h of s uh, as the open loop transfer function, 
and we multiply times s squared and take the limit when we're, uh, we're going to have the acceleration steady state coefficient um, the same case here if we have a couple of poles in the upper loop tensor function we're going to have some value ka and uh, if we want a steady state error to be zero then ka should tend to infinity in order to to this to happen g times h should have three poles at the origin then ka is going to tend to infinity and steady state error vanishes <coughs> okay well now um let us make a brief sum summary of what we have um, said here. Uh, first of all, let us define the type of a system. Uh, this type, or, or the, the term types of a system, refers to the quantity of poles at the origin of the uh, open loop transfer function. If you remember, uh, actually the, the error coefficients and, and of course the steady state error depends on the reference that we're considering, but also it depends on the number of poles that we have in the open loop transfer function. So uh, let us make a little table here. Imagine that we have uh, a system type zero, meaning that we do not have any pole at the origin. If we apply a step function in the input, then uh, steady state error becomes one over one plus kp. Um, if we uh, have, if we input a ramp then uh, we're going to have the steady state error goes to infinity or a parabola again it goes to infinity if we have a uh, type one uh, a system then steady state error goes to zero remember that uh, kp here goes to infinity if kp goes to infinity then uh, steady state error is, is, is zero uh, if we have a ramp then the steady state error is 1 over kb and if we have a parabola we have infinity uh, and uh, uh, finally for type 2 uh, if we input a step we have 0 we have a ramp then again we have 0 and finally we have a parabola we're going to have steady state error equals to 1 over ka important thing here is that imagine this situation if we have <coughs> initially an uh, open loop transfer function uh, containing no poles at the origin and we have or we need steady, steady state error to be zero then the only thing that we have to do is to add some pole at the origin if we have a step this will make the steady state error going to zero that's the main idea here but of course original transfer function cannot be changed so the main idea here is to do something extra in order to to have this in order to add this pole at the origin and that's precisely the, uh, the definition of a PI if you remember a uh, PI controller is uh, some controller containing in uh, some integral action this integral action is precisely uh, transformed to the plus domain as 1 over s I mean we are going to divide over s and actually it uh, leads us to have a pole at the origin and uh, finally what we need to do is to design some uh, transfer function for a controller containing a pole at the origin okay we're going to make some example here <coughs> Let us make some example. Imagine that we have this closed loop um, control system. Transfer function to the right is uh, is the plant, is the original process, and um, for some reason we have some uh, um, previously designed controller, like the one shown in, uh, in the in the transfer function at the left. Um, so if you can see a um, controller has uh, some uh, extra zero uh, which is going to uh, be cancelled with the pole of the original process this is uh, uh, some technique just in order to uh, impose another dynamic 
uh, for, for the for the plus loop tensor function and uh, well if you can see we have a pole at the origin uh, here in the in the process so what is expected to be is that the step response goes to zero but well let us find all steady state coefficients for this system okay <coughs> if we apply all the formulas this is a straightforward salt uh, and, and finally we're going to have the following the, the following solution I um, recommend you to uh, obtain this this uh, these coefficients just using the formulas this is as easy as it is okay but just perform do it please guys now let us go to another example uh, the other example is a uh, similar system, um, but without the pole of the origin. So if you can see, we're going to have 1 over s plus 2 as the original transfer function for the process. And uh, we have the uh, same reference, we have the output. So the main idea is uh, to have null steady state error. For this case, if you can see, we do not, we do not have any pole at the origin in the original transfer function. So according to the table, uh, it's enough to add some controller, I mean some other transfer function containing a pole at the origin, just in order to uh, to this to have to happen. So <coughs> let us propose an integral controller. So um, for example, we're going to have the transfer function of the proposed controller to be just an integral, one over s. Okay, of course we can have some uh, some k i mean some gain in this controller but just for simplicity we're going to have this this idea here just to pull the theory uh, open loop transfer function becomes uh, the multiplication of course of the gc times g uh, we have uh, the, the uh, feedback transfer function h of s equals to one and uh, this is going to be one over s times one over s plus two then uh, steady state error for the step input will be of course we first uh, obtain kp kp is the limit uh, when s uh, goes to zero of gc times g and it's going to be equal to the limit when s tends to zero of this uh, transfer function if you can see when s tends to zero kp goes to infinity if kp goes to infinity according to the definition of the uh, position state error um, we have steady state error equals to zero so that's the main uh, idea when we have uh, uh, an integral control okay guys thank you